The ability to quickly and efficiently farm targeted optimized areas is crucial in any grinding game to power up your character at specific moments of your progression. This is Wismaril here, bringing you an advanced farming route and guide to acquire XP and gear during your post-campaign progression. After tens of hours experimenting with leveling, skills, areas and interactions, I've gained very solid knowledge in this vanilla version of the game. Let me share with you my findings. As always, you'll find all the tips and tricks I can think of. Starting off with the build, we're using a version of the Piercing Coal build that's been tailor-suited for a very specific playstyle and dungeon. It deals damage solely through ice shards and solves the mana problem of the sorcerer class through Frozen Orb, Frost Nova, Avalanche and Frigid Breeze. Let's begin with mana management, because I think that's the problem every player faces during early level progression. Most of the mana refilling nodes in our skill tree rely on lucky hit chains, except for two, Frozen Orb and Frost Nova. Greater Frozen Orb has the ability to give you 5 mana per enemy hit by its explosion. On a group of 7 mobs, that's 35 mana. Combine it with the aspect of Frozen Orbit, which makes it explode 2 additional times, and that's 105 mana, which basically means a full mana bar. You want to manually cast 1 or 2 Frozen Orbs at the right distance, just before your damaging window. This way, when the explosions happen, they will refill your mana at the exact time your manual casts of Ice Shards try to deplete your mana bar. Frozen Orb is a supporting skill, not a damaging skill. We're using it for two equally important reasons. Mana and chill application. For the latter, Frozen Orb applies a 34% chill to anyone it passes through, plus an additional 9% per explosion. While that sums up to 61% chill, that's not necessarily how you want to make the most out of the spell. You want the freeze effect to be triggered by the initial 34% and the three explosions to start generating mana. This implies excellent timing as we're going to see in a minute. Blizzard applies 18% chill per second and Frozen Orb 34% per cast which means you want the mobs to stand in your blizzards during 4 seconds before you fire a frozen orb. 18 times 4 equals 72, plus 34 equals 106% chill, which basically means frozen. We are using frozen orb as our second enchantment for further restorations of mana, which come especially handy against single targets. Out of the few build guides I saw on the internet, no one seems to use Frozen Orb as their second enchantment. I think it's a mistake for early farming, because you're giving up an important resource management node in low density situations, which the build struggles with. Firebolt enchantment is all the rage it seems. Let me make something clear. If you're not able to reliably crit with your damaging skills, which are not at early level farming, the dream of Firebolt enchantment to trigger Devouring Blaze is only, well, just a dream. You're wasting an enchantment slot and 4 skill points for nothing. The only reason why I have considered Firebolt enchantment at early level farming is for the 30% mana regeneration when killing a burning enemy thanks to the Fiery Surge node. Let's do a quick calculation. You normally regenerate 10 mana per second, so you only gain 3 additional mana per second when this triggers. And as per my test sessions, it doesn't seem that fiery search stacks. Killing additional enemies only refreshes the duration of the regeneration, but does it stack it like 10 times 30% more mana regeneration? I tried to break this regeneration node, but I couldn't. So let me know in the comment section below if some of you guys were able to make this mana node OP, one way or the other. I would be very interested to read your feedback. Thanks to the enchantment system, the sorcerer class has the ability to easily adapt to the content you're farming by just putting a spell in an enchantment slot. 
you really need to use that at the fullest to guarantee your success with the class. Don't worry, comes high critical strike chance, firebolt enchantment will make a blazing return. Pun intended. On to Frost Nova. It seems everyone is going crazy about mystical Frost Nova that makes enemies vulnerable. Yes, mystical Frost Nova makes a big group of enemies instantly vulnerable, but in reality, your AOE clear is so great already that you don't really need that. As for single target damage, don't try to convince me that a 24 second cooldown skill applying a 6 second vulnerable is great. I think that by blindly making that call, you are missing out on a very interesting feature of Frost Nova. Shimmering Frost Nova is a mana potion, which in the vanilla version of the game is invaluable. It generates 4 mana per enemy hit, which can be clutch in certain situations. So Frost Nova is our second mana potion along Frozen Orb, and both of them are not RNG reliant. They don't depend on lucky hit procs on vulnerable targets of cold damage. We need a way to control our source of mana regen. We can't always rely on RNG. Speaking of that, our last two nodes for mana management are Avalanche and Frigid Breeze, which do a similar job. Lucky hit procs on vulnerable enemies have a 20% chance to put you out of your misery with mana. That's a lot of ifs for it to trigger, but it's definitely worth the skill tree investment. Mana is the number one issue early game, so a chance to have a free cast of Blizzard, Ice Shards or Frozen Orb, and a chance to generate 15 mana here and there certainly helps. This is especially true in single target fights, which the build really sucks at. About single target fight you need to clearly understand the strengths and weaknesses of the build. We'll save the opportunities and threats for next time. <laughs> this build is absolutely bonkers at area of effect damage. It has the ability to make a room full of enemies vanish in the blink of an eye. So you don't really need to over invest in that area. The build already excels at that. On the other hand, a single target fight will completely deplete your mana if you're not careful with how you approach boss fights. Let's give a quick example of what over-investing in AoE clear means. It seems greater ice shards is all the rage. Wow, you get a chance for an additional bounce when enemies are not frozen. Well, if you are picking your fights carefully, 95% of the time enemies will be frozen. On the other hand, destructive ice shards make enemies hit by 5 shards of one cast vulnerable, which is very important in single target fights. Understanding strengths and weaknesses allows you to make educated decisions. Besides that, I don't know if you've noticed, but since ice shards pierce enemies, if one cast goes through 3 enemies, all 3 enemies are made vulnerable. That's how you want to apply vulnerable in AoE. Not with Mystical Frost Nova. Now let's talk about the farming route, which plays a huge role in the fine tuning of this build. This build is designed to efficiently speed farm the Tomb of the Frozen, located in the Anika's Claim dungeon, that is right next to the Malnox stronghold. You need to clear Malnox stronghold first before you unlock this very special dungeon. It is very special in many ways. First, the long corridor style of this dungeon is perfect for piercing ice shards that, you know, shred in straight lines. Second, the mob density is quite good. You'll be able to group up enemies for maximum splash damage on elites. I'll teach you how to do that during the damage rotation part of the video. Last, but certainly not least, the boss at the end of the dungeon is not really a boss. It's more of an elite on steroids. The big difference being, it doesn't have a stagger bar. Question, what does this build suck at again? Answer, single target fights and taking down crowd controlled immune bosses. Well, guess what? This dungeon makes those issues manageable if you play your build correctly. 
speaking of playing the build, let's have a look at the damage rotation and mechanics involved. Let me tell you first that this build is not the easiest to play. You won't only have to whirlwind your way. It's not necessarily the hardest. Once you get a good feel for it, things get pretty smooth. But there is quite the learning curve before you can be efficient. So let me drive you through that. You need to set up every encounter, every single one. You need to think about your position, their position, and the next three spells you're going to cast before you actually cast them. If you played Diablo 3 Greater Rift Pushing, this will help you a lot, because the playstyle here is very similar. First and foremost, you want to drag and group up enemies, which means having their AI want to attack you so that they follow you to the sweet spot you want them in. You need to stack enemies together with an elite or two. It's not mandatory that the elite is among them, but it certainly helps. If the elite is not grouped up with them, it at least needs to be within fire range when the trash mobs are packed together. When the trash mobs are together, cast a blizzard between you and them to slow down the front line, allowing the back line to catch up. Cast one or two more blizzards to pave their way with chill applications. After 4 seconds of chill application on the majority of the trash mobs, fire one or two frozen orbs depending on how much mana you have left. You need to get a good feel for the spacing you need between you and the mob pack. This is crucial. Aim those frozen orbs at maximum density. Those shots of frozen orb need to freeze the enemies as they travel, because when the three explosions occur, enemies need to be frozen. This will completely refill your mana bar. That's when you fire your uh, ice spells. You want 90% of the enemies to be frozen when you manually cast your ice shots because of all the damage multipliers involved. That is very important. Ice shards has a 1.25 multiplier against frozen enemies and the aspect of control gives you a 1.45 to a 1.6 multiplier when equipped on your amulet. Plus, all the mana management magic, the three M's, only happen on frozen enemies. Manually cast your piercing shards onto the elites. Don't shoot anything else. If the fight involves elites, you must cast ice shards onto the elites. If possible, you want to line them up to make them all vulnerable thanks to the destructive ice shards. Vulnerable is another 1.2 separate damage multiplier that can be increased to a lot more with gear and paragons. So that's how you mechanically make the most out of your damage multipliers. Like a chess player, you need to be thinking a few moves ahead. So while you start firing ice shards on the elites, you need to keep an eye on your surroundings. Are there any unchecked trash mobs around you? If yes, pop Frost Nova to freeze them. They want to be part of the AoE slaughter that's about to happen. Are there any elite offensive affixes in the vicinity? If yes, pop Ice Armor. Do you need to reposition yourself to optimize the damage output? If yes, use Teleport or Evade. Those are the questions you need to ask yourself during the damage window. With experience, you'll consider those factors during mob pack setup and you'll drag enemies to form very optimized clusters. So this is just speed farming, but this knowledge here will be very useful later on when you will be pushing nightmare dungeons. The sorcerer class is all about that. Positioning, setup, cooldown management, mana management, damage window, if you thought you just have to right click things, you chose the wrong class. Now for the build itself, I have included a planner in the description field of the video. Remember, Frozen Orb and Blizzard are supportive skills. We don't care about their damage. Don't equip a basic skill on your bar. You're a grown-up sorcerer now. 
you need to learn how to fight without those. For legendaries, I've only included the ones you can farm from dungeons, with a few build-defining exceptions like the aspect of frozen orbits and the aspect of frozen memories. Spice up your build with additional aspects you'll be looting, such as the aspect of fortune and the conceded aspect. Now, let's round up the build with a few tips and tricks. Don't trust the green checked arrow that's telling you to wait for a dungeon to reset after completing it. I don't know if it's a bug, but after a dungeon clear, I would typically exit the dungeon through the in-game wheel, then TP back to town, then do a town routine involving blacksmith, vendor, sometimes stash, enter back the blue teleport, which takes you back to the dungeon entrance, and there, even if it looks like the dungeon didn't reset, I would enter the dungeon and find it ready for another farming run. So do that. Don't wait for the dungeon to seem like it reset, just go for it. Also, don't waste time in town. Town is lava, clear run, do the town routine, and get back to farming. Rinse and repeat. Tip number two. To sustain your crafting material needs, salvage rares and legendaries for their respective currency, and sell magic and common items for gold. This is very important. You need both. Don't just salvage all or sell all. Salvage yellows and browns and sell blues and whites. Very, very important. As always, if you've enjoyed the video, leave a like and say something nice in the comment section to boost the YouTube machine learning algorithm. Give me some feedback on what you like in the video, what you don't like, and what you want to see in the future. I'm cooking up some really nice build guides for you. You see, it's of the utmost importance for me to keep my content clear, razor sharp, and on point. You'll never see me try to waste your time in never-ending introductions. And as for audio, I'll never use expressions I've heard a million times, such as, with all that being said, let's jump right into it. As you've probably noticed, I'm not a native English speaker. I have a very strong French accent, and no matter how hard I try, there's nothing I can do about it. But there's something I can do, which is to keep the overall quality of the content very high. I have good English vocabulary, hopefully decent grammar, and experience in teaching things. Hope you all appreciate the efforts. And as always, I'll see you in Sanctuary. Nephalem.